Movies like this one are the hardest ones to review. It's just mediocrity. There's not a lot to say. Uh, I guess I'll go with it anyway. Hi, everyone. It's me, Grant, the movie and TV guy. Welcome to Raison Popcorn with Grant, everybody. And today, we are talking about a movie. Movies and TV, that's what we do here. And that movie is The Long Game. Um, the Long Game is based on a true story. Um, it is directed by Julio Quintana. I hope I'm saying your name correctly, sir. Um, and it's based on the, on a true story uh, set in Texas. Um, it's 1956, um, and it's a, the border town in Texas. And um, the new superintendent in school, uh, J.B., played by uh, Jay Hernandez. Uh, he's a former uh, vet in World War II. Uh, he comes back and he becomes the superintendent. And he wants to start, he wants to get into a prestigious uh, golf country club. But um, when he's turned down, um, his car is accidentally vandalized by um, a fellow by the name of Joe and his group of friends who are practicing their golf game. In lieu of uh, giving him any kind of punishment, instead, he decides that in lieu of uh, cutting the grass for him, he's going to take them on as the school's first golf team and eventually get to that championship, um, along with his fellow vet and um, a white golf coach uh, who becomes sort of an assistant uh, to Mr. Uh, to uh, Mr. JV, played by Dennis Quaid, who's also a producer here. Um, this is... Um, the story of how they fight against racism uh, to overcome and play the play the long game of golf and be it's very old fashioned. Look, I, I, I movies like this are really hard to review negatively because it feels like you're picking on someone who really is making an effort. But I'm sorry, I really didn't like the long game. I, I thought this was really lame. I, I full disclosure, I should point out, I know somebody in the credits of this movie. Um, I didn't realize this until tonight, but uh, yeah, um, Dennis Quaid's wife is one of the producers on this movie, Laura. She also is a former high school classmate of mine. Hi, Laura. How are you? Um, yeah. But with that out of the way, uh, I just, I didn't, okay, I'm not going to go so far as to say this movie is terrible, because it's not. It's not, there are worse movies out there. There are worse movies in theaters right now than this. I acknowledge. Epic Tales is worse than this. Something like, um, even Godzilla Kong is, to me, is worse than this. This is not, not necessarily a bad movie. But it's a dinosaur of a movie. This movie, if anything, should have been made in 1956. Should have been made in 1956. This just feels like... This is the epitome of, of Remember the Titans at Home. That is literally what this movie feels like. It's so cliched and so unearned and wants so badly to tug at our heartstrings. There are some good performances here. I actually think Jay Hernandez is doing quite well. Dennis Quaid's quite good. I like the young actor who plays Joe. Um, he's quite good. Um, they got some, some ringers. One of the kids in the group... Um, was uh, the actor who played, like, the little cousin um, in one of my favorite films of a couple of years ago, In the Heights. So, like, they're good actors here. Um, but it's just... It's just so old-fashioned and grandpa-driven. It's just such a... It's such a movie... It's, it, it's, it's the cinematic equivalent of drinking a flat glass of lemonade on a rocking chair. There's, there's just nothing to this movie that is going to have anybody outside of people who just want to see this movie again. It's just another sports movie. And it's one of those movies that doesn't believe... I'm sorry, I'm not trying to question anything, but racism existed in the 50s, absolutely. And I am very sure that the characters in this film faced racism it is not this cartoony god damn it it's not it's not there's not even not even died in, not even clan members are this over the top i'm sorry it, it's it's such a cliched depiction of people and again 
I'm saying this as someone who's on the side of the kids in this movie. I think it does them a disservice. This feels like one of those movies and it, 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 it that is kind of in and of itself a little bit racist in the sense that the movie's goal kind of is yeah, just just take it on the chin. Don't feel your feelings. If someone is being horrible and bigoted toward you, just conform to what they want from you to show them up. I'm sorry. No. No, 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 no. I feel like this movie is kind of made for people, for white people to be like, of a certain age to be like, see? We're, see? We made a movie that's anti-racist. It's like, yeah, but you made a movie also that has no such, no subtlety or tact to it. It's just, it's the most, it's, it's so, it's, it's the, the characters who are being treated poorly are quiet, underplayed, innocent characters. And the villains are over-the-top cartoons. And it, it's, it's, it's stereotypical on both sides. It's not, it's, it's just such a weird... Also, the filmmaking in this is very odd. It almost feels like someone is trying to do Danny Boyle or a Terrence Malick-style cinematography or Darren Aronofsky, but the movie's tone doesn't fit it, and also they don't have the budget to pull it off. So it's like a weird... A lot of scenes where the golf scenes, you're supposed to kind of get a feel for the, the, the space, and the camera is practically up the nose of the actor playing in the scene. Like, it just feels like a very weird, and it's whipping around, and it's just self-consciously stylized and slick, kind of for no reason. Cheech Marin is in this movie for also no reason. And he's one of the best things about it, but he kind of just seems to be playing Cheech Marin in this. I don't, I don't know. I just felt like this whole thing was very, it was good, well-intentioned, I'm sure. I don't, I don't think it's going into anything with the intention of, I think that the heart of this movie is in the right place, but I think it doesn't really do much of anything correctly in how it tells the story. And it doesn't really feel theatrical quality at all. I just, I felt watching this like, I've seen this movie already. I've seen it done better than this. There's no, we never get a sense of who the team as people really are. We get tastes of them as people, but we never really, it always goes to the most stereotypical sense. We never really understand who these young men are. It's all through the lens of the white characters. And there's really only one white character of note who's not a seething teeth gnashing mustache twirling racist villain so there's no and that's the quaid character so there's never really any feeling that we're getting anything out of this um on a, on a complexity level it just feels like there take there's an interesting story to be made about this uh, this story is interesting enough to carry a movie not this movie a better one this is like taking an interesting this is like you know what it's like it's like taking a really good article about this kind of story like you see in the New York Times and then filtering it through a low-budget cliched sports drama framework machine. It just feels like it's it feels like fodder for the mill. There's just nothing to this movie that you haven't seen in a thousand other sports movies. That being said, I didn't hate this movie and I do think if you take your dad or your grandpa or your uncle, they'll probably like it. But Honestly, I on Twitter I gave this movie three and a half stars, and I'm feeling like that's too generous. I'm gonna so I'm gonna drop it a little bit. I'm gonna give the long game two stars. It's not terrible. It's just under the line of recommendation, but I can't recommend this movie. I'm sorry. I know people are not gonna like that I said this because it is getting relatively decent reviews, and the audience score especially is pretty high for this one, but. I don't know, I just, I really thought this was a missed opportunity to tell this story in a more complex way. It just felt cheap and kind of like, well-intentioned to toss together, kind of. Yeah, anyway, it's a long game, two out of five stars. I'm sorry, I have to do it. Um, uh, let's close the book on it. Trailer Trash, let's talk some Trailer Trash. We Grown Now, talked about it looks good. The Wild Robot, talked about it looks good. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, talked about it looks good. The Forge, talked about it, doesn't look good. This looks very, this is the latest Kendrick Brothers joint, and um, well, they made War Room, so, yeah. And then Unsung Hero, talked about it, looks pretty good. 
Um, also, thank you to Lionsgate for uh, gifting me two free tickets uh, on Adam for um, like a, a free tickets coupon for that movie. I appreciate it. Um, anywho, Unsung here, yeah, the talk about it looks good. Was the shawarma? Yes. After the credits, there is a special message from one of the actors. After the credits. After all of the credits. All right. That's it. Uh, we will be back um, tomorrow uh, for back-to-back -back reviews of the Bollywood action thriller uh, Batty Man, Shote Man, starring Tiger Shroff, as well as AMC Screen Unseen. I don't know what it is yet, of course, because it's AMC Screen Unseen. But it's an early review. Tuesday, uh, we'll have a review of uh, Irina's Vow, starring Sophie Nalise. Um, and Wednesday, we'll have reviews of The Greatest Hits. Sorry, that's a little late. I apologize. I wasn't feeling great yesterday. <laughs> I'm going to be real about it. Uh, so I'll review that and Hundreds of Beavers. Uh, Thursday is The People's Joker. We also have coming up Abigail, Rebel Moon Part 2, The Stargiver, Deep Sky, and Spy Family Code White, uh, and many and more to come, and, and also Sasquatch Sunset. I hope I hope it's coming, coming near me because I want to see that one also. All right, uh, but that's coming up, and uh, that'll love me next time. And until next time, I'm Grant the Movie and TV Guy. I see it all, and I'm happy to share it with you. I love you all. I appreciate you all. I love El Class Mist. I love you thousand. Be kind one another. If you like this video, give it a like if you wanna. Give it a subscribe if you wanna. With the bell, I don't know what it does, that's what you're supposed to do, or so I've been told, leave a comment, even if you say Grant, I like waffles, it really helps out. Um, if you want to find me on Twitter, reviews this and other fun stuff, you can find me on all my social media, I'm on literally everything, at either Raisin on Popcorn Grant or Raisin on Popcorn. Take care of yourself, take care of your mental health, this is incredibly important, and I want to know down below, what did you think of the long game? Did you like the movie? Did you hate the movie? Uh, think my opinion's good? Think I'm full of shit? Comment below, let me know, and until we meet again... We were all raised on popcorn. Big mouth extra butter. Catch you guys next time. Take care, everyone. See you around. Bye.